Greetings, this is Ryan Roy from Liberty3D.com. In this video, I would like to share with you some workflow tips for the Third Power's Cage Deformer plugin for Lightwave. I primarily obtained Cage Deformer to help me avoid having to rig everything that I animate with and to allow for a highly visual and interactive editing experience, which it does provide. But there are some things that I had to figure out in order to get things to work smoothly. So let's talk about that. The first topic is the cage entity itself. What are the user's options for setting it up and how does it influence the final result? For this demonstration, I'm going to use a model generated from MakeHuman. This old fellow wants to show off his extravagant hat, but we're more interested in this guy's face. Now, the latest version of MakeHuman lets you choose a low polygon version of the model that gets generated, which happens to be incredibly useful for Cage Deformer. So what I did was I chopped off the low poly head and threw it into layer 2 of the high detail version. Now, for typical character models, you can usually just chop off your character's head and paste it into a separate layer. You only ever have to actually model the cage if the original model is too dense to provide usable playback with the Cage Deformer plugin. Try not to be excessive with the geometry that you use as the cage object. The cage must also consist of only faces, so get rid of any subpatching if it's present. Before jumping into layout, we need to isolate the area of influence by using a weight map on the original model. Otherwise, the cage deformer will try to evaluate the entire character, which will slow down things significantly. In layout, throw in the model and set its subdivision level to 1, and the order to last in order to optimize performance for cage deformer. Make the cage layer a child of the original object. Now if you place a bone in the character, rest it, and try to move it around, you'll notice the proxy head isn't following. We need to make it use the bones from the full detail object. So with the bone selected, hit P for properties, select the proxy head, and pick the full detail object in this drop down menu item. Now the cage object moves exactly as the parent object does. Because this cage object is nothing more than a reference for Cage Deformer, hide it and deactivate it. Next, we need to go into the Deformation tab for the main character object and add Cage Deformer. Now we can use the plugin's Add Cage Deform command. The reference object here refers to the cage that you wish to use, so we'll pick the Layer 2 object. The Cage Deform properties for this object will appear afterwards. We want to use a weight map to isolate the cage's influence to the character's head. Again, this is assigned for performance reasons. In the As drop-down list, most often you'll be using Base. Click Cage Deform to bring up the tool list. Click on the cage so that it highlights and now all of these tools can be used to deform the character's face freely. Just think of how difficult something even this simple would be to do with Lightwave's conventional rigging methods. I can now get some really crazy facial expressions out of this dude with zero effort and animate it. Yeah, you're a badass now, old man. Keep in mind, however, that it will still be better to do simple things like opening and closing the character's mouth and eyes, or other simple deformations with Morph Mixer. So my advice is to use Cage Deformer for detailing and other things that are not easily done with rigging in Lightwave. Also remember that Cage Deformer will work seamlessly with your existing rig, so mixing and matching the two systems is not an issue at all. That takes care of setup, but there's one other thing that I need to mention revolving around performance issues that you will run into. Cage Deformer doesn't pose any problems when you have a character standing by themselves, but in an actual production scene you're probably going to get into a situation like this where things get so sluggish that it becomes hard to work with. Let's address that. In one of the scenes for Delura, I have two characters using the Cage Deformer plugin at the same time, and as you can see, things are really choppy. 
Well, one thing we can do to fix this is to simply select a character and uncheck Cage Deformer in Object Properties to disable it, but leave its keyframing and whatnot intact. So one way to get this animation work done is to only use Cage Deformer on one entity at a time. But what if performance still leaves something to be desired even if all the other Cage Deformers are disabled? Real-time playback is incredibly important for ensuring the animator has a fast workflow, and I'm not getting it here. This can be fixed by deleting everything but the character and any other needed elements. Cool. This is way more workable. Now I can save this as a separate scene and make whatever edits I want with real-time playback. The problem now is, how do we get all the cage deformer edits done in one scene and transfer it to another? Very easy. There's a null object called cage that gets added to every single cage deform entity. Just select it, go into object properties, right click and copy cage deformer. Load the original scene and we can select the same cage null object, go into its properties, remove cage deformer and paste. This is how you transfer cage deformer animation between scenes. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover for now. Cage deformer is a game changing tool for Lightwave, but it does have its learning curve and its quirks that users will need to adapt to. I use it primarily for facial animation, but the applications are endless and it just adds a whole new level of freedom that has made a lot of the work that I do so much more enjoyable. Anyways, be sure to check out my comprehensive guide to IK Booster, which contains workflows that will exponentially increase your productivity when it comes to animating and rigging. I'm currently working on my commercial tutorial that covers common scenarios for character animators, and I'll let everyone know as it becomes available. Thanks for watching, this is Ryan Roy signing off.